Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Sockbot and today I want to talk about character creation in Dreams. In particular, I want to talk about what, in my opinion, and a bunch of other people's opinions too, is one of the best ways to go about sculpting detailed characters and detailed designs within your game. So if that sounds like something you're into, stick around, maybe like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. But as always, no pressure, because I'm not David Bowie or Freddie Mercury. I think it was a, that duet, right? Those were the two. Anyways, a recent comment on a video of mine brought this idea back into my brain, so I wanted to make another video on it. The video that I'm talking about in question was about changes that I would make to Dreams based on what we saw in the beta, and Ultima Triple Seven, that's a hell of a name, but I'm pretty sure that's right, was talking that they missed the corner editor within Little Big Planet, and more specifically that they were bothered that sculpting custom shapes in Dreams required using a lot of negative shapes. I'll get into the replacement for the corner editor later in the video, but first I want to talk about the negative shapes and how slash why they play into sculpting. So Media Molecule themselves talked about this in a few of their streams, specifically the one on January 7th where they took requests from people who didn't know how to make certain things or certain designs within Dreams, and then they took those things and they created them on stream. From what they said there and from watching a bunch of the creation streams outside of this, it does seem like they have a very very specific way of going about character creation that follows somewhat exactly what Ultima Triple Seven, we'll just, we'll just call him Ulti or her Ulti from now on, what they said. Basically, for any sort of character creation, they seem to start with a slab or blob of material and, just like the commenter said, cut into it to form their character. If that was confusing before, by the way, uh, the negative shapes that Ulti was talking about are just the shapes turned to delete or subtract mode, and these are what they use to quote unquote cut into the material. Now obviously, that's not all they do, but for a lot of features, it is, and so I wanted to talk about why they do this, and where they do this, and more specifically, when it makes sense for you or me to do the same. So, from a bunch of footage, faces and heads are the biggest examples of this that I've seen. They tend to chunk out eye sockets and kind of chisel into cheeks of characters. Gosh, that sounds really violent. But they also spend a lot of time refining the shapes of eyebrows and other bits and bobs sticking off of characters using this method. But honestly, I feel like the awkwardness that people are experiencing while watching this and doing it themselves isn't tied directly to this whole cutting and carving aspect, but to the sculpting idea as a whole. For me, character creation in Dream holds some of the biggest changes from Little Big Planet. Well, I think it holds the biggest changes hands down, but I guess that's up to the interpretation. So I never spent a whole lot of time working on characters in Little Big Planet, but whether or not you made a lot of custom characters yourself, or I made a lot of custom characters, this sort of sculpting is alien to a lot of us because we've never 3D sculpted before. Little Big Planet was always a 2.5D game, not full 3D, and if you don't know what that means, that means that the game plays much in the same way that a 2D game does, but it uses 3D visuals and assets. That means that for us, we were creating in much the same way that you would create a 2D game, which uh, would lead into the big shock of this. But long story short, we didn't sculpt in full 3D in Little Big Planet, so trying to compare Little Big Planet to the parts of create mode that use sculpting in Dreams is sort of kind of impossible. So after seeing this comment and trying to come up with a more complete response, then yeah, me too, bro. I decided to look for better places to kind of find ideas and tips on this sort of sculpting, and I found them on YouTube. I'd seen videos of 3D sculpting before, so I looked up some of these videos because I wanted to see if this cutting and carving technique was present elsewhere, and it definitely is. Just about every person or creature that I saw someone sculpting in these fancy computer programs that I can't afford was cutting and carving in their noses, their lips, their eye sockets, hair you name it, pretty much everything that had that level of detail. And outside the sphere of Little Big Planet, Dreams, and Media Molecule, I started to think of where a lot of these people were coming from. I'm sure that a lot of the artists who create these sort of sculpts and then post the time lapses online for me to watch learn their artistic skills through some sort of physical medium like clay and other sculpting materials because that's what art teachers teach. Now, in physical space, can you imagine trying to stretch a piece of clay into a perfect nose? How about an ear? Hell no, you'd end up stretching it too thin or not thin enough, not to mention the nostrils and 
I'm talking about nostrils now, this is strange, but it, it really just doesn't make any sense. There's no precision in that sort of technique. This is totally different than drawing with pencil, for example, where cutting away anything, and by, I guess in, in, this, in this aspect it would be erasing anything, is going to leave some sort of mark. So you need to be pretty precise with your lines and build them up darker and darker as your picture takes shape. That's just shading. So that sort of technique does translate pretty well into creating 3D terrain, where you can mold small pieces and stick them together to form something larger, but like I said before, there's not enough precision in this to use it for things like facial features. So with clay, you can use metal tools to slowly carve into your shape until you've cut in the nose or a set of lips, basically facial features. Now, I know that was a lot of physical stuff to talk about, but trust me, I'm going to talk now about how it translates into dreams. So, the DualShock and the Move controllers are even more imprecise than your hands, so obviously you can't expect to just blurb out a perfect face by painting with and stretching out a shape. It's far more efficient to, like in the streams, place down that big blob of material and carve into it bit by bit, undoing constantly because we wouldn't be digital artists if we weren't undoing constantly, but just carving into it until it's perfect or I guess near perfect because, uh, well, I'm not trying to recreate God of War here. Maybe you are, I, I, don't, I, I don't know your life. Now, I know that this concept is, is a lot of new stuff for a lot of people, myself included, but I don't really wanna bore other people who never played Little Big Planet or who already knew a lot about 3D sculpting for animation or video games, but I did want to quickly mention the other places where this type of carving makes more sense than 3D painting. For one, natural and unnatural set pieces, terrain, and detailed objects will all involve this kind of sculpting to some extent. Basically, anywhere where you need that level of precision, you should really be cutting more than placing, in my opinion, of course. When creating the stones that will build a mountain, for example, feel free to get up close and carve out the most natural looking stone that you can. But, specifically important, in moving on from that, I want to explain where this kind of sculpting is completely unnecessary, and likewise what I consider my replacement for Little Big Planet's corner editor. I still miss it, but like, it's, it's, it's a semi replacement. So, starting with terrain, do yourself a favor, try 3D painting some rocks or dirt or grass, and using the blend tools and flex tools in the sculpt's options to reduce the edges or make them less apparent. If you miss the corner editor, well, it's not necessary if you blend the edges to where you can't see those nasty corners that you would spend hours and hours deleting or reforming. But I suggest this to all creators, because even if you're trying to make an epic RG, RPG, that's the word I was looking for, with beautiful graphics and assets, the biggest thing that I preach on this channel is to not get too caught up in the details, and I have to remind myself of that too. That I have found is the biggest and the quickest pitfall for people that want to create their own games, so sculpt that stuff out quickly and use the tools they gave us to make it prettier. It's just like working with charcoal or watercolor, you don't have to be perfectly precise to make a beautiful scene, and in this case, a beautiful game. If you are dead set on sculpting perfect assets with only a few blends or flex, again, the, the blends and flex, if, if I didn't mention before, are the effects that you can put on sculptures you make to change the, the kind of blends on the outside of it. Well, that's fine. Use the carving technique and get them perfect, but for the love of all things video game, create a few versions of grass terrain and use the duplicating tool to rotate, resize, and place them all over. But whatever you do, do not sculpt out every single section of terrain individually. You'll never finish, and even AAA games don't do that, so okay, still my opinion, but it feels like that's just a waste of time that you could put into creating more fluid gameplay or more unique levels. Look, obviously all of this is just my take on sculpting. The cutting techniques that 3D artists use, to me, are super useful to us for sculpting in dreams, and rightly so. I guess what I'm trying to say is that these techniques are super useful when you want that much detail, like for a character that you're going to be seeing the whole game, or for like a legendary obtainable sword that your players can collect in your game. But a lot of us creators are on our own in dreams, so if AAA studios with hundreds of employees don't get carried away sculpting and carving every single asset individually, you shouldn't either, and I shouldn't either. Again, I need to remind myself too. So use this carving technique wherever you feel like you do need that level of detail because it is hands down the best way to achieve it for the reasons that I listed before. But don't be afraid to create and reuse simpler assets by just 3D painting and duplicating. 
that's why we have those tools, so why not use them? But hey, let me know what you think. I think that everybody has the ability to create an, create an awesome game in them, and that's why I create videos on this channel for the most part, but maybe you have something to say about reusing too many assets. Let me know what you think in the comments, but at any rate, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all are doing fantastically, and I will talk to you in the next video, which should be on Saturday if I can manage to edit all this stuff by then. Hopefully. But anyways, for now, goodbye! Bye guys!